With a fastball in the 90s, elite Major League Baseball level spin rates and five strong pitches, it's easy to see why Bryce Message is one of the most sought after 15 year old pitching prospects in the nation. The Pennington School sophomore has already committed to the University of Virginia, but this New Jersey star is just as driven to succeed as an entrepreneur off the field. In business since age 11, Bryce has shown a reach for the star's work ethic and a passion to be the best. Today, we talk to Bryce Message on this episode of JBS Generation Next. Oh yeah, whoa, look, they can never keep me down, I'm going, and if I ever fail the snow, I'll go again, I never quit, cause I know that every loss may lead to another win, I'm going up, I, I bet when I land, they gonna tell me it's lucky again. Generation Next, Jersey Baseball Show, this edition is with, uh, this part of our series with Bryce Meckage, uh, 2024 sophomore at, at the Pennington School, uh, local, right around the corner in, uh, in Pennington, New Jersey, um, Bryce is one of the top uh, sophomores in the state, in the country, and is already early committed uh, verbally too, as you can see by the hat, University of Virginia. Uh, welcome, Bryce, and uh, certainly happy to have you here. Thank you. Let's let's uh, let's get on first uh, your kind of recruiting story. Again, it's you know it's it's hard for us older people to to you know fully grasp. Hey, he's in tenth grade. He's you know, not just verbal, uh, but but verbal in one of the top schools in the country. But obviously, that's not how the uh, the world doesn't work the way it did when we were younger. So, so tell us about how your recruiting path happened. You know, obviously, I'm sure you had multiple multiple great opportunities, and and what stood out about UVA that you know got you pumped and ready to make that commitment. Well, um, I'll start with. I mean, I had. I mean, UVA really stood out in the terms that the coaches and the area just really stood out to me. Um, the program's obviously phenomenal. The coaches are just awesome. They're all great. Um, I honestly prefer the younger style of coaching. Um, I'm not, no hate on the older style of coaching, but I like how the younger guys tend to work with us. Um, my mom coached at Virginia for field hockey for 10 years. So I've been around the environment plenty. Um, UVA really stood out. Um, it's really close. It's local. Um, I didn't want to go somewhere too down south because it's far away from the family. And I don't want to go somewhere too close where I kind of want the college experience, obviously. Um, but uh, I mean, it was, I obviously, there were a lot of other contenders that were had similar factors, but Coach Dickinson, the pitching coach at Virginia, I mean, over COVID, um, 10 months, they couldn't really see me in person. So, I mean, we were on the phone once a week. I mean, my dad, when he was at Iowa, he said, hey, I talked to my coach probably as much as he did before he, before he even, before I even played there. So, I mean, I definitely had a great bond with him. Um, so over quarantine, I had talked to plenty of coaches and I mean, I can just tell. So, uh, I mean, some coaches I'll talk to, it's a five minute conversation. I don't feel much connection. They're very, hey, you're my next recruit. I'm going to offer you this. We're going to talk, you know, I feel like Virginia definitely created some sort of bond and connection with me. And I definitely feel like there's a lot more emotion between us. Um, but definitely COVID really made, honestly, people for me, obviously the seniors and juniors have a really, I understand how the recruiting had been affected for them, but for me, it definitely benefited because it had our connections between my coaches, I can kind of understand over the phone for 10 months, 11 months before they could ever see me. And then I came to the summer and I mean, I did everything they want me to do. And I mean, I, Virginia is also the reason why, I mean, I went to such a, a, a big program was because I want to shoot for the stars. I don't want to go. I mean, I want to be able, I want to grow my game to be the best that I can be to go to Virginia. Obviously if I had gone to a much smaller school, I wouldn't have to cast my net so far. I wouldn't really have to. I mean, I'm not saying you don't have to work hard to go to any other D1 school. It's very difficult. I totally agree with that. But I mean, the amount of dedication, more dedication I'm going to have to put to start freshman year is vastly more than any other school, obviously. So. Uh, did your, you mentioned your, your mom, a field hockey coach at UVA, your dad, certainly a, a, a great baseball background and, and drafted by the Dodgers uncle uh, coach with the, the pirates right now. Um, 
did did growing up with it with the with the game at that level um with sports at the level you know and 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 still you know some awareness of the recruiting process on on you know from your mom too did that affect you or kind of change your process in any way um it, it definitely did um my uncle standpoint, he had coached at many colleges before he had gone to the big leagues, obviously, and had much more experience before that. His uh, perspective was much different than it is today. Um, it's, it's, it, it was kind of what most people, most typical older people, not older, but like 40s, 50s, kind of yeah, 40s, 50 kind of people kind of look at how is a sophomore committed? You know, they kind of look at it as your junior year summer. That's the, that's the time to roll. Yeah. So, you so, know where I'm coming from. That's good. Yeah, I, know. I know exactly. My mom, she helped me a lot. Um, I don't know if you know, Derek Kramer. Um, uh, I mean, he, he really, really helped me throughout the process. Um, he's a great guy. Um, able to give me a lot of help me create connections, kind of my bridge because obviously they can't text us directly. Right. So um, he was my bridge kind of between that. So he was an awesome resource to have. My mom, she definitely understood the process quite well and kind of explained it to me, um, what I was having to go through for the next 10 months and what I was going to have to sacrifice every night. Mm -hmm. um, but she definitely helped me understand. I mean, especially not so much at Virginia, but she was at Princeton, won a national championship for field hockey. So she has there, I mean, obviously, similar to Virginia, top program in the country. Yeah. They, she had a very similar understanding with recruiting kids from a younger age. I mean, she recruited kids in eighth grade. I remember I used to go through when I was young. I mean, we'd go out to watch games of eighth graders and these kids would be, it would be crazy. And they would commit at their freshman year. So I'm not, it's not anything too out of the blue crazy for me, but um, my dad's background too, very similar. Princeton baseball is obviously not Virginia, but it, it's similar, obviously division one baseball. Yeah, for sure. And, and, um, yeah, then your summer, the last uh, U.S. elite, right? Yeah. Um, where did you get to go this summer? Uh, I was down in Hoover, Alabama. Um, it was in Georgia, PBR, a couple, um, Florida. We were kind of limited because my parents don't have jobs, so uh, we had limited money spending. Um, and we had some local tournaments and stuff, but mostly the bigger ones were down in Hoover, Florida, and Georgia. Hoover is the uh, SEC championship site, right? Yep. Um, and so, so a lot of great experiences there. Um, I know another place that's kind of been big in your development um, and, and certainly helped you along the way, BPC down in South Jersey. Um, how has that helped you get to the point where your velo is, you know, really spiking and, and, and getting into the, you know, low, you know, low 90s at this point and, and, and hopefully with more room to grow? Yeah. Yeah. Um... I came in last March. I was 14. Um, I came in, I was maybe low 80s, 81, 83, maybe popping 84 every once in a while. I mean, that was lucky if I got an 84. Um, I kind of started working with them. They gave me an online routine. I would probably go there once or twice a month, maybe three. And um, they would, I mean, it was a huge help, especially what they had done through the virtual program. Yeah, um, I'd gone there and there was obviously within the first two months, there was a spike in velo. It was two, three miles an hour, 86, 87. And then right before the summer, it was like 89. And then throughout the summer, I kind of took, obviously I was doing tournaments, but I would, there I was doing the virtual program and it definitely helped me get to the point now where I'm low 90s, 90, 91. So, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, it's been a huge resource to me, especially. Um, but uh, Baseball Performance Center, I go down there, get my analysis done and stuff. I've been working with uh, Tread Athletics, Ben Brewster. Um, I, I've, I've been, I'm going to try them for a little bit throughout the winter, but I'm still going to go to BPC and get checkups. And obviously having a physical between us two is a lot easier. Yeah, sure. No, absolutely. And, and Tread's probably as good as it gets as far as the online yeah. training. You know, they're, they're so far advanced if, if that's the way you decide to go. Yeah. Um, but you know, I guess now, now that you've taken one of the obstacles and, and gotten rid of that, and you've got that final vision or that not final vision, but that, you know, college vision of UVA, you know, I guess it start, you really start to think about what do I need to do over the next few years to, to position myself to, 
you know, not just attend there, but but make an impact there, right? You wouldn't be going there if you didn't want to make an impact. So, so where do you see the the major areas, or what's kind of the improvement plan, you know, over the next few months, even the short term plan to to push it up, you know, to the to the next level? Yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, I'm kind of a guy that shoots for the stars. Um, yep. I definitely think that uh, to play at Virginia and start, my goal is to start freshman year and then junior year, I get drafted first round, obviously. I mean, that's every mm-hmm. kid's goal, you know? So um, definitely things I'm going to have to do is continue with these online programs, really just work hard every single day. I mean, it's just the little things, you know? It's correcting the little things to make them more efficient. Um, by the spring, my goal is 95. So um, that's going to be a big, big goal. And then obviously just keep expanding on from there. But all of it's really continuing on these virtual programs, really just hacking those out, getting really just mastering everything they're putting on there and then going down to PPC, checking things out, lifting, getting stronger over the winter, and then hopefully go out in the spring and dominate Pennington. So, yeah, absolutely. Now you say reach for the stars and I guess that would kind of qualify as, as somebody age 11 starting their own landscaping business and uh, getting all electric equipment and things like that. So, so you, you mentioned that's still going strong. What, uh, how did that, how, like I said, at age 11, I'm, I'm just like happy I make it to, you know, wake up and go to school in the morning. So how, how does that even happen for you? And, you know, tell us about that. Well, at 10, 11, um, my dad's entrepreneur. So he kind of, I kind of have inherited that a little bit. So uh, my neighbor, great lady, she was like, you want to come over and mow my lawns? So I started mowing a little bit when I was 10 and I started thinking I was just, coming up with ideas. I would write down brainstorm stuff. And I thought of an electric landscaping company and how I was thinking because the electric landscaping company five, six years ago was very little. It was just very okay. Not, not nothing compared to what it is today. It's crazy how much it's changed. But um, I, I ordered a landscaping. I ordered a mower. My dad helped and gave me a loan. Um, I bought a bunch of, bunch of land electric stuff and the people here in Pennington are quite, uh, they are very, very thoughtful of the environment. So these big landscaping companies have these big gas mowers would, I mean, obviously they're so much bigger than me, but I go door to door giving them vouchers of what my company was. And I give them my phone number and the next morning I'd wake up, I had text messages up and down. I was like, Oh my goodness. So I, <laughs> what did I just do? <laughs> what did I just, exactly. So I started within a couple streets of me. So I kind of worked my way up. Um, I kind of bought more and more lawnmowers, kind of started expanding a little bit um, over the years. Um, and then I obviously paid back the loan for my dad and kind of went from there. And then COVID kind of hit. And I obviously had enough money build up over four or five years with dozens of clients. I went and started buying boats and campers and eventually real estate here in the next year. So I bought, I bought a camper recently about a year ago and I, I bought it for like 1900, redid it, probably spent 200 on it, sold it for 11 grand. So, I mean, it's, I'm, it's, it's crazy. It's like 10 grand profit and then the boats. So I have a bunch of money racked up and I'm just waiting to, I have my, my uncle's really big in real estate. So hopefully start investing in some properties. So, I mean, it's, it's been a super beneficial for me just in a life, just realizing life learning from that has definitely been a definitely cool thing to have in my life. And you had a boating license. Yeah. Yeah. I do do a little bit of fishing, but uh, I bought a boat, kept it to myself. I did not sell that one. So boating, boating license, but you can't get a driver's license for another two years. Yeah, I know. It's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody's got to drive you down to be able to get on the boat yeah that's my dad's job <laughs> and yeah. so we're, we're talking about uh john boats right is that was uh i had a john boat at first okay. like over covid i had a john boat it would it, it putted along pretty nicely and then i was like i want something bigger i want something better so i got some big bass boat it was about 60, 65. Oh, wow. It gets cooking. It's a 18 foot. It's a, it's big. Wow. And um, we take it up to my grandparents' lake house up in Poconos, Lake Wall and Palm Pack. And we go up there yeah, a couple times a summer. 
a great and, place to go in the summer too. Yeah, I know it is definitely refreshing. So, I mean, it's, it's fun little thing. It's, it's annoying. The jumbo is nice. I could pull it around the yard, but I got to have two people for this one. <laughs> You need a driver. You need somebody else to help you with the boat. This is this is kind of a become a pretty big uh, undertaking here, right? It's a bit of a family impact at this point. Yeah, yeah. It's not, not, it's not such a fun little hobby for them anymore to see little Bryce go do that. Now it's a that's, that's kind of a pain, you know. <laughs> They're praying for another year and a half till I get my license. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Aren't you seventeen yet? <laughs> I know. So so that's crazy. Like you, that you've always. Obviously, always been a baseball guy, but you know the entrepreneur bug has always been a thing too. I guess probably even before the uh, the landscaping business, were you uh, you know even at a younger age, or was that sort of the beginning? Uh, at the younger age, I was always kind of selling stuff, trying to always make money, scavenger around. I mean, it's kind of the family I came from. I mean, my, I mean. We're no like we're not our family's not some rich like rich crazy rich people so we've always kind of had a scavenger for that sort of stuff so I kind of inherited it a little bit okay. by itself. But I think you learned some great you know lessons about resourceful and being resourceful and then and you know relating with that to other people and 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 you know kind of those personal skills too that you know those things really you know, they stick with you forever. Yeah, I know it's definitely a big life lesson for me. Yeah, so. Well, you mentioned you're a reach for the stars guy, and I, you, you talked about some of your goals, right? I guess the immediate goal, even before UVA, is to, to just dominate through the, the high school level and just make sure you keep getting better. But what are, what are our goals? Well, um, I'll start with my goals. You're going to be pretty amazed by it. probably about a year and a half ago. Um, if you had seen me then, you would have been. You just told me you got two big boats. I'm not going to be amazed by any. Uh, <laughs> you already hit the amazing stuff. This is yeah. going to be impressed, though. I have a feeling. Well, about a year and a half ago, um, I was was in eighth grade, end of eighth grade, and I mean, it was to be this is before COVID. So, I mean, if you had seen me, I was never much of a pitcher. I didn't really pitch much. Way more hitting than I ever did pitch. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't, I definitely wasn't any D1. You would have never thought that. You would have been like, this is your next the average high school player. Um, so, I mean, I never would have thought I'd be at this point now. I would have thought I just would have been another high school player. But my goals were always so high. And then I started realizing pitching, I started pitching more. And I was like, okay, I got something going here. So I set goals um goal throw 80 when I was like 70s in eighth grade if that 69 I wasn't throwing too hard so I set my goals and over COVID it gave me more and more time especially with these short zoom classes till like 12 yeah uh, so I have all afternoon I would just grind grind and grind and sooner and later I had hit 80 and then the next goal was 90 and the next goal is to commit and obviously I did all those things but my I mean my goals now, obviously, I mean, it, uh, before you'd never think a hundred's possible. The goal is to throw a hundred. And I mean, it's a possible goal nine miles an hour away. It's not that far. And I got two years to do it. So um, that's definitely a goal. Obviously being a first round draft pick is another huge goal. So and you mentioned the hundred and you mentioned BPC earlier. And obviously the, the name is Mike Adams, who, uh, you know, who is not, quite as big as you are anymore uh you're bigger than him now but but you know mike just finished a, a great year at triple a and you know is maybe 170 pounds if uh if that and 510 and he's throwing 100 so you're right why would that be something that and you're learning from him so yeah, why would that be something that could be like uh not possible you know yeah i know i definitely before i'd gone to bpc i'd always thought 100 just if you think about 100 you never imagine a high school. You imagine like a Roldis Chapman pops into your brain. Things right. like that. guys that have been in the big leagues for five, 10 years, you know? But I mean, I went to PPC and I realized this guy is shorter than me. He's smaller than me and he's throwing a hundred. How far is this goal? It's, 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 it can't be, it, obviously it's hard, but it can't be that far out of reach. Nothing's so, impossible. And, and certainly not if you can directly, you know, see somebody doing it, you know? It's, yeah, no, I saw it with my own two eyes and, I think it's possible. It's obviously 
insane amount of hard work, but it's a hundred percent possible. Absolutely. And and it doesn't seem like you're letting things go by that aren't, that are, that are possible, you know, it, yeah, it's definitely. pretty, pretty safe to say. Um, favorite baseball team. I'm going to have to go with the Dodgers. At least you have a reason why though, right? Yes, I, I do. My, uh, my dad was drafted by the Dodgers out of high school and then didn't take it. Uh, went to college at Iowa for four years and then, uh, got drafted by them again, played a couple of years in the minor leagues and then, uh, Got hurt, tried to play again, then played overseas. So I've always kind of had a connection. I got a old Dodgers cup for you guys. <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, it's, I've, it's obviously a great team. It's, I, I've gone to a couple games just in all. It's just – it's so it's so cool. I would have loved to play for them one day. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, it's an amazing stadium. It's a, If you were a little older, maybe you could have, with Vin Scully announcing too, kind of missed that one, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but just uh, it's it is it's like you know every, teams want to redo their stadiums every twenty years it seems like and Dodger Stadium is still just like as as amazing as it was fifty years ago it's yeah it's, crazy. I know. it's just so like huge you know it, um, random question favorite or I guess do you have a go to meal on game days okay I'm gonna have to go with a Wawa. Okay. It's it's a Wawa Buffalo Mac and Cheese. That's good. Quite random. Buffalo it, Mac it, and Cheese. Random and the, good. You got yeah. both. <laughs> yes. It's, uh, it's it's I get the medium and then I'll go over and get a little body armor. And I'll eat that before the game. Have some uh caffeine gummies. That will get me going. That's enough right there. <laughs> That's right. That's crazy. And then uh um if you could be D1 at any other sport, right? So we would take baseball off the, off the, whatever, off the list here. What would our, what would our D1 sport be if, if we had the choice of being good at anything else? Um, well, it, for me, it should be basketball. It, wait, my dad was, my dad probably could have gone to Division One for basketball. So I had it in the family. I don't know where my genetics came from. He's a stick man. He's a tall six, five stick dude, but um, me, I mean, I'm just this big dude. Um, if I had gone anything, if I hadn't played baseball, I probably would have been football division one football. I mean, I'm just, I, I'm built like a football player and I'm athletic enough to play football. I played it this freshman year. I could, I didn't play it this year cause I need more. I wanted to develop more as a baseball player. So, uh, but okay. I definitely think it would have been football. Might take it off the table now that we got Virginia kind of locked on, uh, on baseball. We don't need to get them worried every uh every game yeah yeah i know i my dad's trying to put make me he had a buddy in college as a punter in the nfl and he says he wants me to be a punter at virginia too i was like uh, that's a bit of a <laughs> 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 um proudest moment on the field Ooh, that's a good one uh Um, obviously I haven't played, I mean, I've played a ton of years, but that, that I really, really remember made an impact. Um, is, to tell you the truth, it's probably my first game at Pennington. Um, I definitely first high school game. Mm -hmm. Um, it's definitely an, entirely different. It's not really anything like travel ball. You don't have daddy ball. It's entirely different. So, um, my coach is an awesome dude. Um, all the coaches, the team playing for my school, my hometown um, is definitely super neat and something special. Um, stepping on the field the first time, pitching, I mean, it was just something special for me. It definitely hit the spot. It's definitely cool to pitch for my hometown and represent, you know. Completely different vibe than, than travel. And it's not that one is good, one is not. It's just so much different and so much of a, a neat experience. And, and, and you know, hopefully uh, – that leads to state titles and things like that in the future because that's an even better experience, I think. Yeah, don't be surprised no. if you got a couple in the books in the next. Better, year. you better. <laughs> the, the the prep, I got I got family that went there, so I'm always pulling for them. Yeah. Uh, um, don't strike me as a huge uh, video game kind of person, but uh, phone app. What's the uh, uh, what's the one phone app or website that you couldn't do without? Um, 
Ooh. I'm going to have to say it's kind of like we got the top <laughs> questions now. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to say probably messages. It's kind of basic, but I mean it's like every day it's kind of connecting with family. It's every day I kind of lost touch. It's it's like a missing piece. Um probably second close behind might might be Snapchat. Um <laughs> I mean just like no touch not in touch with like friends and it's just I don't know. It's a lot easier to communicate with people. It's it's just the second messaging. It's right behind messaging. <laughs> People, the, the creators of Snapchat should know that throughout this series, that's been the clear number one, can't do without <laughs> high school apps. So that's that's a good thing. I think for them, it probably fits their model. They should be, uh, they should know they did a good job. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate the time, Bryce. Um, you know, not just star pitcher, but with the, the entrepreneur, the uh, we'll see you out on the lake fishing, hopefully sometime soon this summer. Um, do we do any winter fishing trips anywhere? Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of winter fishing. It's a little too not cold. Nice, okay. No, <laughs> not nice out. It doesn't, that is, doesn't have the same uh, same relaxing effect when you're freezing, I think, right? Yeah, it's not my favorite. <laughs> so, no, we, uh, we certainly appreciate the time. Congrats on the commit to Virginia. I mean, there are not too many better places, if any, to play baseball in uh, college in the country and uh, know that you will do everything you can to get all those lofty goals that you set. So, we uh, look forward to seeing you on the field. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Awesome. Thanks, Bryce. Have a good one.